The New Age belief in crystals is based around the idea that you get different types of energies that allows you to perform certain tasks. It could be healing, it could be to feel a certain type of emotion, a certain type of feeling to activate certain chakras, or whatever the case may be. The only thing is though, they don't really work. In fact, they've never been demonstrated to work in proper test conditions. Oh, a few amateurs have proven things here and there. But what is proof outside of test conditions? What is proof in poor test conditions? What is proof when you have a biased person with biased subjects, basically using their biases to support their worldview? Well, it's not really a test at all. But basically you have a number of claims. For example, Jasper. They'll say Jasper has a grounding effect and it works with the lower chakras. It can help to energize you at a physical level. But how do they know this? Indeed, you could say much the same of Astrophilite. When it comes down to that crystal, it has different traits, different properties. With Astrophilite, it's meant to energize you, make you more positive, help to raise your self-esteem. But where's the solid evidence for this? It comes from the faithful. A lot of this is about suggestion. Suggesting a thing is so when you really just don't know. When it comes down to the crystal known as Tanzanite, it's said to have certain connections to higher chakras and higher realms and works with the energy of the heart. But once again, why isn't this demonstrable? Surely if these forces at work are able to have effects on people without them actually thinking those effects into being, there would be a way of testing these things and putting it to full medical usage. A rarer crystal is Super 7, as it's sometimes known, also known as the Melody Stone. The so-called Melody Stone is in fact a combination of various stones. It's meant to have a revolutionary effect on the person who wears it. But is that the case? If it's actually something which is so powerful with such a remarkable and rare stone, then why isn't it something which can be demonstrated? When it comes down to sapphire, it's meant to have a strong effect on the throat chakra, especially if it's blue sapphire. Other colours relate to other parts of the body. But blue sapphire is meant to have an effect on the throat with communication. Now surely there'd be a way of testing that. Testing how a person operates in a speech. Not letting them know if it's a real or fake sapphire. Try this out a whole load of times and it's like, oh actually, all of you guys did really well. You all had pieces of fake sapphire. Would they know? Would there be a demonstrable effect? Well, no one's really done that test. The stone known as petalite, and it's supposed to relate to angels and angelic guides. But where's the evidence for that? How, how could you possibly test that? I mean, that's the main problem. Where there isn't testability, there's no real way of testing it at all. How do you know that? Although, interestingly, it is claiming several of the major crystal books, such as the Crystal Bible, that it's meant to help with treatment for cancer. It's meant to cure cancer and cure cell mutation. But surely there'd be a way of testing that then. If you can't test the angel stuff, you could look at the other properties and say, well, what about this? Rose Quartz is meant to work with the heart and the emotions. It's meant to help people come to terms with their emotions and it can help with depression. Couldn't you test that in some way? Jade has so many properties, including that of fortune of being lucky. It's pretty hard to test that because sooner or later, some luck is gonna come your way not really luck, it's inevitability. But if you look for it and you hold that stone in your pocket, you might well believe the jade made me lucky. Much the same can be said for ruby, which is meant to help bring forward abundance. But really, ruby, jade, or any other such stone, if it makes you more fortunate or brings forward abundance, it doesn't mean you're gonna win the lottery, it means you look for something good and you think, hmm, Maybe that ruby stone has helped me. Amethyst is meant to open the third eye and work with the third eye. So is ruby to a degree. But is that actually true? If the third eye helps you to see truth, helps you to see beyond your limited physicality, 
then surely there's a way of testing that too. Logically speaking, there must be. I mean, why wouldn't there be? And another example, which isn't really a crystal, it's a form of tectite. Moldavite, people claim it's a cosmic stone about cosmic awareness, about channeling higher knowledge. Indeed, many of these stones relate to higher knowledge, higher wisdom, connecting to ultimate truth. But if that's true, how come the information that the New Age channelers and the New Age experts bring forward is very often what they've read in books? The same old spiel. It just seems to me that there is no substance to this stuff. People hold onto stones and they believe what they're told it's meant to do. And as a result, ooh, would you believe it? It does what they are told it's meant to do. But if they're not told, if they're not programmed by the idea of what crystals are meant to do, but they believe they work in some way, shape or form, or they get some kind of energy off it, they still get some kind of benefit. So if a person is given a stone and told it's a different stone, say for example if stones are mixed up in a crystal shop, then they might well believe they're getting certain effects that officially do not relate to that stone in any of the crystal literature. So in other words, it's a psychological effect people get from hunks of old rock ancient pieces of glass.